Hello and welcome to the next lesson in the advanced C sharp course brought to you by your friends here at Tuts Plus. Now in this lesson I'm going to take you into what seems to be a slightly odd feature to be added to the C sharp language within the version the C sharp 4 and that is the dynamic type. And the reason I say that that's a strange feature is because C sharp at its core is a statically typed language which means every single type every single object that you create has a type and once it has that type you can't change types throughout your code it is static once it's there it can't change and those rules are enforced by the compiler at compile time so if you try to change types that are incompatible or anything like that you're gonna get a build error you won't be able to compile what the dynamic keyword allows you to do is to write more dynamic code that's a little bit more flexible in that way which seems a little strange as to it probably doesn't necessarily belong in C sharp for that reason but really I think what it was added into the language for was so that you could take other dynamically type languages such as Python or Ruby in the form of Iron Python or Iron Ruby that are targeted to the .NET framework and be able to call from your C sharp code that is statically typed into dynamic objects within another dynamically typed language but we're gonna get to that in a few moments so let's go ahead and jump into some code and see what this dynamic keyword really is. So here we are back in Visual Studio. I'm going to go ahead and do the new project dance and I will select console application and click OK. And so here we are back in our boilerplate code. And so I mentioned before that C sharp is a statically typed language, which means if I were to do something like this var test is equal to string. Now at this point the compiler knows that the test variable is of type string and I can do all of the operations that are associated with a string against this test variable. But what I can't do is change the type. So I can't say test is equal to five. If I try to build this, the compiler is going to complain and say that you can't implicitly convert type int to string, which you would definitely expect because C sharp is a static typed language this variable was created as a string it will be a string for its entire scope for its entire lifetime and there's nothing we can really do about that but with the advent of the dynamic keyword this changes a little bit so instead of saying var and using implicit typing I'm gonna switch this to the dynamic type or dynamic keyword and now if I save and build this it will build just fine and if you set a breakpoint in here and hit F5 and then go ahead and step through your code you're gonna see that test its initial value is null, so which makes you think that this is kind of coming from the whole object family of inheritance, and if you were thinking that, you would definitely be right, but its type is dynamic. So if I step over this assignment statement, you're going to see now that its type has changed to dynamic string. But now, test is a string. But if I were to execute the next line, text equals 5, you're going to see that the type has changed to dynamic int. So you can see here that there is still a sense of it knows what type it is, the compiler and the runtime know what type these variables are, but allow some dynamic changing of those types throughout your code. So that's a little bit interesting, but at first I really didn't think, well, what, what could I possibly use this for? Because I don't want to start intermixing a bunch of dynamic code in with my statically typed code because it's just going to make things very difficult to understand and difficult to read and probably even debug as I go through my code and, and introduce errors in, in certain ways. One thing I think that this was definitely added in for was to allow us to write statically typed code within our C-sharp applications to call out to other applications or scripting runtimes, if you will, and execute dynamically typed code from those worlds. So let's take a moment here to see what exactly that looks like. So if I were to erase this code and I were to come over to my references and I were to right click and select manage NuGet packages and make sure that I am selecting the online source and in my search, I'm gonna search for Python. And really what I wanna find here is the Iron Python package here. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Python or Iron Python, really you don't need to worry about it, but this is just a, a quick example that I'd like to do. So, what adding that into my project has allowed me to do is now I can create what's called a scripting runtime. So, I'm going to create a Python runtime, and that's going to be equal to Python. And now I need to go over this and hit control period because I want to add using statement for ironpython.hosting and I want to say python.create 
create runtime. So this is going to create a runtime environment that I'll be able to execute Python code from within my C-sharp code base. And now that I have this runtime created, I can do something very interesting. I can create a dynamic object, and I'm going to call this a Python file, and I'm going to set this equal to Python runtime dot and I want to use a file and I'm going to create a file here in just a moment let's just call it test.py and now what I want to do is I want to so this is going to load the Python script that's found within the test.py file that we're going to create here in a moment into this dynamic type of Python file and then once I have that I want to call a method that's found within this Python file this test.py from my C sharp code so let's go ahead and create this file quickly so we'll do a uh, an add new item and I'm just going to create a code file and I'm going to call this as I named in my class and my C sharp code test.py and I'm just going to throw a couple very quick lines in here if you don't understand what these are doing don't really worry about it it's definitely not within the scope of this class but I just want to give you an example of how I can write code in a different dynamically typed language such as Python and be able to call it via my C sharp code so I've created I've imported my sys I'm going to define a method or a function here, and I'm going to call this say hello to Python. And so then within here, I'm going to simply put in two print statements. I'm going to say print hello there, C sharp. And I will do another print line. Nice to finally chat. Since Python is extremely excited to be able to finally talk to C sharp. Now, one thing I have to do in order for this to happen is because this is not a recognized file type within my project, I have to change the build action to for this to be content and I'm going to copy to my output directory always just so that it will copy this file into my bin directory upon build of my code. So now I have a, some Python code here. I have a method called say hello to Python and now I can come back into my C sharp code. I have loaded this test.py file into my C sharp application dynamically and now I can call my Python file and I can execute and as you can see here there's no IntelliSense for dynamic types because it really the compiler has no idea so basically what dynamic is allowing you to do is to bypass all of those compile time checking so it will assume that whatever you're trying to execute exists and there will be no checking until the runtime which is kind of nice and flexible but at the same time it's kind of dangerous because if you don't test this thoroughly and if you happen to mistype something or try to execute something that doesn't really exist within that dynamic runtime then you're going to get a runtime exception as opposed to a compile time so you get a little less checking but a little bit more flexibility so my method that I want to call here is say hello to Python and I will save this and I will build and everything will build successfully and if I hit control F5 I missed something here scripting go back to my test.python oh I forgot my semicolon here excuse me save and build come back to my program and do a control F5 and there we go. Now you can see I get hello there C sharp. Nice to finally chat. So I have been able to call from a statically typed language such as C sharp into a dynamically typed language such as Iron Python. So that's a very cool concept. You can start to get outside of the statically typed boundaries within the C sharp language to reach out to other languages or other functionality built in other languages. Now that's a pretty cool concept. Not something I use on a regular basis, but I can definitely see where the C-sharp language is going and where .NET is going and, and allowing us to interact between a lot of different types of languages. So it's very, very cool. But I do have to say that one of the more interesting things that was introduced by this concept of a dynamic type is the type of expando object. So an expando object is a dynamic type. So if I were to create dynamic and I would say test, and now I could say this is a new expando object and I will save that and I will need to do a control period to add in the system di system dot dynamic namespace and now what expando object allows you to do is because this is a dynamic type this test is a dynamic type it's gonna bypass all of the 
compile time checking of properties that exist on this test object. And what that allows us to do is to use this expando object to be able to dynamically add properties at runtime and assign to these properties whenever we need to. So I can do that by saying test.name is equal to John, as we've done before, and I can say test.age is equal to 35. I can save this and I can do a console write line of test.name and console write line test.age. I can save this, I can build, and I can do a control F5. And this is going to run just as you expected it would, but I have been able to, because this is a dynamic type, I've been able to dot bypass the compile time checking of these properties in their existence because they don't exist because test is just a expando object that doesn't necessarily have these properties but by using the dynamic type by using this keyword I'm allowed to add these properties at runtime so that's a pretty cool trick now if you have ever used ASP.NET MVC applications you may know that you can start to pass data in between your models and your views and things of that nature and one of the things you might have come across in your use of that is the concept of a view bag and a view bag does exactly this it allows you to use an expando object to dynamically add properties to this view bag that allows you to pass data back and forth in between your models and your views so that's very very cool it allows you a lot of flexibility within a statically typed language such as C sharp and be able to introduce some dynamic concepts but I would definitely advise you to be careful with this and not to use it too much as as I mentioned before it's gonna make a lot of things complicated in the debugging of your code and keeping things straight of at this point what type is this object and at this point what type is that object so in your day-to-day -day applications definitely stick with your normal statically typed processes but if you need a little bit more dynamic flexibility you can definitely add this in and it will work just fine for you so I hope you find some benefit in that and I will see you in the next lesson